Should you lose fat fast or should you go for the slow and steady approach? In this video, you're going to learn what are the pros and cons of the aggressive diet, what are the pros and cons of the steady diet, and which approach might be better for you to get you better results and maybe get you there faster. Now, if you look at the current situation, on one side of the spectrum, we have a lot of coaches, a vast majority of coaches recommending the slow and steady approach for everybody. Now, it's kind of the premise that if you go very, very aggressive, you're gonna regain all the weight back and it's better to go, just go for a half a pound to a pound loss per week, make it sustainable, take the steady approach. If you have 100 pounds to lose, it's okay. It's gonna take a couple of years, but you're gonna get there eventually. You know, just trust the process. So that's one side of the coin here. And then on the other side, we have another extreme which is these holistic bullshit gurus who are recommending these juice cleanses where you lose 15 pounds per week in some weird turmeric kind of mix and then you don't eat anything except the juice, which they're often affiliated with and selling you the juice. So you lose a lot of weight fast and you can kind of get back to your lifestyle. You now got rid of all these toxins and now you're good to go. These people are doing a lot of harm to the industry. These people are full of bullshit. This is a bunch of nonsense. Your liver doesn't need any detoxing from some weird uh, magical juice. I'm gonna leave a link to an article below and some science discussing that for you guys that wanna look in deeper into that. So the whole detox uh, idea is uh, absolute nonsense, which is not supported by science. So these people are doing a lot of harm. So that's an extreme way of doing an aggressive diet, but there's actually the right way of doing an aggressive diet. And one great example of that is the Rapid Fat Loss Handbook by Lyle McDonald, where he actually uses real science to set you up for success with a rapid diet. And that's where he adds a lot of protein to the diet. There's exercise involved. There's the proper recommendations of macronutrients and it's actually working fine, right? It can be a great introduction to a very sustainable uh, long-term weight loss. So let's go back to aggressive diets versus steady diets. What should we look at? What are some of the factors to consider? Well, number one thing that I would look for is your psychology, right? Are you the type of person that gets motivated by big goals? Do you care about big goals? Or do you more care about the process, right? Do you, do you trust the process more? Or do you really see, okay, that's a huge goal, I wanna go for it, I'm super motivated, and if I get the results, I'm gonna be even more motivated. You know, that's some people really respond to having that big goal and having those massive results up front because an aggressive diet does exactly that, you will lose a lot of weight fast and that might keep you motivated. That's one of the reasons why if you look at the research, most people don't end up regaining the weight. They actually are very happy with the fact that they lost a lot of weight, they kept on doing the diet because the diet worked. So that's on one side of the spectrum. Then of course, if you have psychology is more like, well, I don't really care about the result right now. I care more about the process. I care about being healthy long-term. I don't necessarily even care about getting abs in six months or a year or three months or two years. I don't really care. You know, I'm not, I know I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna trust the system. I'm just gonna put in the effort as much as I can and I know I'll get there. So that's in terms of psychology, you wanna see which type of person you are and then adjust the diet based on that. Then looking further, you wanna look at your lifestyle. Right? What is your current lifestyle? If you're under a lot of stress, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're highly, highly stressed from your work, from your relationships, maybe your family or something like that, it's probably not a good idea to do an aggressive diet because aggressive diets, if you go very low calories, you will experience an amplification of all those things that are happening with your mood, with your stress levels. You're gonna have more anxiety. You're gonna have less of a easier time to fall asleep. There's a lot of different things. You might be having these mood swings, your libido goes down, you know, there's a lot of negative effects of going very low calories, which is probably not a good idea to have if you have a very, very busy lifestyle. People who have a very, very busy lifestyle respond best to tiny changes, to tiny sustainable changes, because if you try to revamp your whole life at once, if you're very, very busy, that in 99% of cases, what I've seen leads to failure because there's just not enough space. There's just not enough space in your life right now to do an aggressive diet, and that's okay. In that case, you do the slow and steady approach and you get there eventually. The time will pass anyway, right? Both groups will get to the same end result. Now, the question is just which approach do you wanna take, right? If you're a student, who's like a part-time student, have a lot of free time, you can kind of do whatever you want throughout the day, you know, you spend a lot of time on Facebook and social media, you play your PlayStation or your Xbox and you just have a lot of time and you have a lot of energy and a lot of willpower, then 
yeah, that kind of lifestyle is okay for an aggressive diet. You might as well go aggressive and get your goal faster so you can ex exit the diet and focus on building muscle and focus on other goals. So it's kind of looking at, okay, what's my current lifestyle? Can I handle really being on a low calorie? Because if I'm looking realistically for most guys, it's going to be somewhere like 14, 1500 calories, right? It's not going to be a lot of calories in a diet like that. If you go very, very aggressive, so it's going to be very deep into a deficit, a lot of calories below maintenance, probably more than like 25, 30% calories below maintenance. So that is not easy. That is very, very hard and requires a lot of willpower. Now, moving on to the final and the third factor, and the one reason why I left this as a final factor is your physique, your amount of body fat that you currently have. There's only one exception where I would not recommend uh, the aggressive diet, where I would not recommend going really heavy on the deficit, and that is if someone already has abs. So if you're someone who is already lean, if you're watching this video and if you're looking to step in on stage or if you're really, really lean, it's probably not a good idea to do an aggressive diet because in that scenario, if you look at the data, it's pretty clear that people below 10% body fat lose a lot of muscle mass if you go aggressive, if you go with a hardcore caloric deficit. Above 12% body fat, in those categories, you might as well go aggressive. And the more body fat you have, the more aggressive you can go. If you're someone who is at 35% body fat, you have a huge belly, you might as well lose five, six pounds a week, right? You might go very, very deep into a caloric deficit for at least eight to 10 weeks to lose a lot of weight initially, and then you can kind of transition to a more slower approach, and naturally that itself would slow down. Someone who is, let's say, between 12 and, and let's say 14% body fat, losing about 1% of your body weight per week is completely fine until you get to your abs, until you can clearly see your six pack. And 1%, you know, that's a pound and a half, at least for most guys. You know, if you're somewhere around 176 pounds right now, that's a decent amount of weight, right? That's more than two pounds per week. That's a decent amount compared to, let's say, losing only a pound per week. Also, if you're someone in there, in that category of like above 15% body fat, if you can't see your abs at all, you might as well go for 1.5% of your body weight per week, right? That's probably gonna be in the range of like 3%, right? Of um, three pounds per week, somewhere between 1.5 to 2.5%. That's pretty good, right? That's gonna get you to your goal faster and then you can transition slowly into that more steady approach. And what will help in this scenario in, in the way I kind of like to organize aggressive diets is more like a sort of a carb cycling approach or some kind of caloric cycling. It's more like caloric cycling where some days you really go aggressive. Then on the other days, you don't really feel like you're dieting. So on some days you go like 1200 calories, like really, really low. And then other days you go higher calories. You go 2,500, 2,400. And then the weekly deficit is the same. But what this does, it allows you to train better and put more effort into the gym. It also will make your psychology work a little bit better because you're gonna not feel like you're dieting every single day compared to a straight calorie deficit across all the days. So it's kind of playing around with those calories and seeing which approach works the best for you. So if you go out with your friends Friday and a Saturday and you feel like you wanna eat a little bit more calories, you wanna go out, you wanna have fun, put your training on those days and amp up the calories, maybe even go to 2,800 calories. And then on those other workout days, go with 2,000 and then on the rest days, go with like 1,100, right? You can distribute those calories throughout the week any way you like, but make sure that it's something you can stick with and also that it makes sense, right? It should make some kind of sense while you're, why you are adding more calories on certain days. I'm just giving you this as a tool where you can organize your calories throughout the week to make your life easier and to make the diet easier, despite the fact that you're going very, very aggressive in a deficit, the deficit doesn't have to be every day. It can just be in a course of a week. And this is shown to be more beneficial both psychologically and physiologically, actually. There's some uh, slowdown of those adaptations that generally happen when you go into a caloric deficit. So it's a very, very interesting approach to use if you have to go on an aggressive diet. And again, I'm gonna leave a lot of links in the description below for studies for you guys that wanna look into this and wanna look for the comparisons of aggressive diets versus slow approach. Also some recommendations in terms of the rapid fat loss handbook from Lyle McDonald. I'm gonna leave the link to the book in the description below for you guys that wanna read more. Lyle's stuff is great. I mean, he's very knowledgeable. He presents the science in a way that everybody can understand. So highly recommend you check out that book. Overall, the steady or the aggressive approach will depend on your personal preference. That's the end goal. But take into consideration the three factors that I mentioned. So your psychology, your lifestyle, and your physiology, and you will make a much better decision 
I really look forward to your success. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions on the matter. I know this is a very complex topic and we can go on for hours and hours, so make sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions or any doubts or if you just wanna say, hey, this, I think this will work for me and share which one would you wanna do, the aggressive or the slow, what type of motivation do you have? Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.